congratulations, you took the plunge and invested in your own digital storage oscilloscope. But you don't know quite what to do with it yet, do you? Well, that's okay, I got your back. Let me start by helping you learn a few things about setting up your scope and then show you how to perform a simple test that you can use every single day. Today, I'm gonna to be using a little powerhouse of a scope. It's the U-Scope and it's offered by AES. Now, while it's only a single channel scope as opposed to the two or four or eight channel scopes that are available, its entry level cost and ease of use makes it a great way for you to stick your toes in the water before you dive right in. The screen itself is divided into sections or divisions. This particular scope is divided into eight sections vertically and 12 horizontally. As you might guess, since the scope displays a voltage input over time, the horizontal scale is divided into units of time and the vertical scale is divided into units of voltage. So the first thing we have to do is set the scaling for both. Depending on the scope you own, you may have to assign a value per division or select from a value that covers the entire range of the scope's screen. If that's the case, we call that the sweep. As you get started learning how to use your scope, most of the first connections you'll make will be to something in the vehicle's 12 volt electrical system. For that reason, you can generally set your voltage range or sweep to about 20 volts. That should just about cover most of what you're going to connect to. There are a few exceptions though, and we'll cover those in upcoming episodes of How To. The time division you select though is something completely different. This is gonna be based on the system or component that you're trying to test. If you want to test something that happens really fast, like the CAN bus signals, then you'll need to choose a time that's fast enough to keep up with it, somewhere around 50 microseconds per division. And if you're testing something relatively slow in comparison, say like performing a starter motor test, then you might wanna set your time divisions to 500 milliseconds per division, or about a five to six second sweep. So when you're just starting out, begin by setting your scope to capture a voltage range of 20 volts and adjust your time settings to 20 milliseconds per division for a total sweep, in this case, of 240 milliseconds. This is called the 20-20 rule, and the time division set at 20 milliseconds per division will give you enough time for the engine to complete two full revolutions while it's running at idle. This will allow you to test just about every component on the vehicle from cam and crank sensors to fuel injectors or ignition coils. But I'm not quite done yet. If I want a stable pattern on the screen, I'm gonna to have to do one more thing, and that's set a trigger. At its most basic, triggering allows the scope to display a stable pattern based on what we adjust the settings to. First, we need to decide a voltage level, and then we have to decide between a rising slope or falling slope. Now, slopes are easy. If I tell the scope that I want it to wait until the voltage input exceeds the value I set, well, that's a rising slope. But if I tell the scope that I want it to start as the voltage drops below the input level I set, well, that's a falling slope. Once I decide those two settings, I next need to decide if I want the scope to record and display the input until it has filled the screen, or do I want the scope to continuously repeat filling the screen? That's a single trigger or a repeat trigger. Now, scopes offer several other trigger options than the ones I've shared so far, but these will do for now. On to your first test. It's a simple battery test that you can perform in just a few minutes when you get the hang of it. It's also a great service to offer to your customers and will give you some practice along the way. Start off by setting up your scope to the 2020 rule. Now consider the test you're about to perform and adjust both accordingly. In this case, the starter is going to be cranking before the engine's running. So we might want to add a little more time to accommodate for the slower engine speed at the beginning of the test. Let's bump it up to 500 milliseconds per division for a total sweep of six seconds on this scope and see what happens. Finally, we need to set the trigger. 
I like the single trigger option because it allows me to start the scope and then leave it alone while I start the car. Now what do you think we should use as settings for our trigger? What voltage level would you choose? Would you choose a rising or falling slope? Now consider we're performing a battery test and we'll be cranking the engine. How about we select a falling slope? And as for voltage level, do you think 11 volts would be sufficient? Well, let's try it and find out. Oh, and I almost forgot. You can also set where on the screen your trigger will be positioned. I like to start one time division in at least so I can see what happens immediately before the trigger settings take effect. Now all that's left is for us to connect the scope to the vehicle's battery just like we would a digital voltmeter. And start the engine. And there you go, you've captured your first waveform. Now we can adjust the pattern view by adjusting the time and voltage divisions. Think of that as the zoom in and zoom out features of the tool and we'll cover that in a later how-to. So what does the pattern itself mean? Well that one you're going to have to wait for. That's the topic of the next how-to available December 21st. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then.